Hey guys, hope you and your families are doing well. Jack Corsellis here, going to be talking to you about the Mark Minervini volatility contraction pattern, which you probably read in his book. So I'm going to break this video down into two parts. The first part is going to be talking to you about the identification of the VCP, so the actual setup itself. And then the second part is going to be more focused on the trade management side of things. So this video is going to be very much in the weeds. So it may take you a couple of viewings to really understand this. There are four parts to every trade. So there is the trade identification. There is the initial controlling risk. There is then the active risk mitigation where you're trying to free roll the trade and then there is the optimizing profits both in terms of thinking about monetary gain but also the efficiency of the gain as well so let's start talking about the trade identification then we'll start working through those other phases being initially controlling the risk risk mitigation and then optimizing the profit so the data we have here for Melly goes back to August 2007 and you can see the earnings come out on this day here for the first day. I don't know if this was the actual IPO day. I seem to think that Melly was trading before that, but if it is the IPO day, you can see a very positive reaction here. Why? Because we have a large increase in relative volume. Price opens on the low, pushes up there, and the fact that it's earnings related tells us much in terms of what a large operator is doing. Certainly looks like there's some interest for this stock here, doesn't it? Price then powers up, and then on the first pullback, this is something to be training your eye to. So I've covered this in recent videos as well, the type of candlesticks that you, you want to be looking for. And the reason is you're looking for both a VC P to form in terms of structural high lows, but you're also trying to understand what is going on from a supply and demand perspective. So I'll be touching upon that in uh, in detail during this video. So this here is a shakeout demand tail. Price then rallies, we pull back down and then start putting in these high lows. Now volatility actually here is pretty <coughs> pretty hard to buy this uh, in this base because it's kind of volatile, then it kind of gaps up here. But you can start to see structural high lows, multiple tight candlesticks, volume drying up. This is all signs to us that there is absorption of supply and less supply coming to the market. Price then undergoes a nice rally. We can see bullish synchronicity bars coming through. So you have good volume coming through. These, these candlesticks are bullish. Why? Because they are widespread on a relative basis, opening on the low, pushing up, opening on the low, pushing up. This is very good to see. Now, the first pullback, what do you see? You see multiple tight, multiple tight range candlesticks overall in terms of the real bodies, little shakeout demand tails. Volume is generally lessening, holds the 10 EMA, bounces again. Then when we pull back down, a couple of shakeout demand tails, put in a structural high low. Now we rally up here, pull back down. Now, as you start undercutting the 50, what do you notice? about these four candlesticks yes there's all yes they are all red but there's a subtlety here to be training your eye to do you see shake out demand tail shake out demand tail and then bigger shake out demand tails on the final two with volume i appreciate it's a little bit hard to see i'm actually just going to move that first bar out the way so there we go volume is actually stair stepping down on these four bars here so these shake out demand tails are indicating that there is absorption of supply now what happens on the earnings here so we have the earnings coming through this here is a bullish synchronicity bar it's actually a bull sash candle pattern and it reverses the last three, three and a half bars down. And we open on the low, push up there, follow up. We try and overcome this, this prior high in here. But this is where you're running into. And if you've read the books, you'll understand overhead resistance. So there's going to be a lot of trap bars here, a lot of supply coming through. So we run into this overhead resistance. And then what happens in terms of the first pullback? Well, we pull back down. We find supportive action around the 50 SMA. And look how the volume starts drying up in there for this kind of, if this is going to be contraction number one, I've tried to label these. This is contraction one, contraction two, contraction three. So the contractions in terms of depth for lessening, that is a constructive sign too. But you pull back down, find support of action on the 50. Nice bullish reversal bar coming through. You start drying up here in terms of the volume as well. Start going sideways again. And then you create this kind of final, con <coughs> final contraction, which in terms of the depth there, is around about seven ish, around about seven ish percent. So just so you understand the contraction point, okay, the first contraction, if I pull this down from peak to trough, is around about, let's just call that 30, 32%. The next one here, let's call that near his damn it, kind of 16%. And then the final one over here, okay, this is getting to, let's just say it's, well, it's nearly 8% because then my mass will kind of work. So do you see how on the three successive contractions, you're halving the contractions. So you're going from 32% to 16% to nearly 8%. That is a very constructive sign to see. Now, in terms of the setup, okay, so we're working, we're working through here. We can see strength in the background, little evidence that large operators are distributing, start building these high lows, volume is drying up where we'd like it to, positive reaction to the most recent earnings, undercut the 50, but shake out, <coughs> shake out demand tails. Now the question becomes, okay where are we then looking to enter enter the stock now i like to look for what i call a trigger bar so what on earth is a trigger bar a trigger bar is a very tight range candlestick on a relative basis so i'm looking at the real body i'm looking at the overall spread so higher the day to lower the day and then also paying attention to the volume so you see how the volume there on that final bar is around about half the 30 day average which is this wiggly black line that you see here i like using the 30 day average if you want to use the 20 day the 30 day the 40 day the 50 day it doesn't really matter you're basically looking for a dry up in a relative 
relative volume on a tight range candlestick that is then preferably sitting on one or more key moving averages. So I like to look for it to be setting up at least around the 10 EMA, but 10 EMA, 21 EMA, 50 SMA potentially there if you have a larger base. If it's a really big base, you may also have some of the longer term moving averages being the 100 SMA or the 200 SMA. If you're on the weekly chart, you may have a clustering of key moving averages. You may just have one there. Much depends on the size of the base. But why is this trigger bar important? What is it actually telling you? So when you're looking at a VCP here, you're looking for contractions from left to right that indicate there is a lessening amount of supply coming to the market. Now the trigger bar to my mind is my interpretation of the more point the line of least resistance this is when the market the stock is indicating to me there is now very little amounts of supply that are coming to the market so i am then expecting a very quick move through so the identification then leads into the initial controlling the risk and then we take it a step further then thinking about the active risk mitigation which will all start making sense but let's just kind of tee up here this final part this final part of the jigsaw so we now have this nice vcp forming from a supply and demand perspective from a visual perspective here you can see the contractions we have the trigger bar coming through so now the question is well where are we looking to enter it okay i use i invariably use buy stop limit orders so i set a buy stop and then i attach a limit to that i then also attach a stop loss to it as well the initial stop loss so we have three options here don't we we have the blue line which is going to be on the high of the trigger bar we have the orange line which is going to be on the high of this final pivot or we have the purple line which is on the high of this kind of upper upper contraction which is nearly the higher the base now where i like to try and enter is the higher the trigger bar why? Because it helps me go in with tighter risk control, which then also means effectively mitigating the risk on the trade. So removing all of the risk on the trade so the stock can now do, do no damage to my account equity line. I can lose no money on the trade. That is the position I'm trying to get to very, very quickly when it is prudent to do so. So I much prefer to use the high of the trigger bar. But of course, you could use the high, this orange this orange line here around about $46, the higher that final contraction, you could use that. But obviously, your risk is going to be is going to be greater. That then makes it harder to mitigate the risk as well. So for me, in terms of lining up this trade, I'm going to draw it going to draw it over here okay but for me it would be somewhere like that and then i'd want to be probably underneath the 21 ema and underneath that final one so for me my risk is going to be around 4.4.7 percent if you were to use the orange and go for the same then stop loss position so your stop loss is then down here you're getting closer to let's say about seven and a half percent i'm can't even be bothered to kind of do the purple one because that's just going to be way too much around about 10 ish percent so i'm going to be around about four and a half four dot four dot seven five percent that is where i'm going to be if you want to factor some slippage I'm going to be closer to 5% instead of more closer to high 7% or, or 8%. So I'm going in at the high of the trigger bar invariably, then going stop loss underneath some one or, one or more key moving averages invariably, but I also want to be underneath the low of the trigger bar and potentially underneath recent lows of maybe it's the last three candlesticks, maybe it's the last five, depends how the trade sets up. That's why it's important to, to kind of think about this. But in course, in controlling the risk, you're trying to create for yourself an asymmetric risk versus reward trade. And you're also trying to position yourself where you can mitigate that risk very, very quickly. So this is how I would be thinking about the trade. I'm going to remove the orange line and the purple line. So let me show you how I think about the trade, because now we have identified it. We're thinking about how we initially control it. So we've got a stop loss underneath the most recent five candle six. We're underneath the 10 and 21 EMA. Let's just say for argument's sake, we have around about five, around about 5% risk on the trade. Okay. So this says 5.18. Imagine it's 5%. Okay. Now we have a couple of options here. So what I like to do is I like to, this is a Sun Tzu art of walker, position myself beyond the possibility of defeat, then I add as soon as prudently possible. So what I am now trying to do is free roll the trade. I want to lose no money on this on this trade. That is how I approach every single trade. How can I position myself beyond the possibility of defeat? Free roll the trade. So here is what I'm doing. As soon as I am filled, I am then entering a sell limit order into the market at one third where my initial stop loss is and or where I am planning to move my stop loss too. Now, because this is already pretty tight in here, I would be looking for a 10% gain. Okay, so roughly around 10%, what's that going to put us at? That's going to put us at, let's say, 49.23-ish. Okay, somewhere around that. Let me just see if I can do that. So we're going to be somewhere in this vicinity here, and let's make let's make that green. So what I am doing is I'm looking to use a buy stop limit order. So that's going to be through the high of this bar here. So let's actually put some figures in. So I've got a buy, step, buy a stop limit order set at 44.91, and then I'd have a limit attached. Now, depending on the market environment, depending on the stock, the limit is usually going to be somewhere between half a percent and a percent of 
of the pivot where I'm looking looking to enter. So that means my, in this instance here, it's going to be buy stop at 44.91. So if price goes above that, then my order is going to be triggered, but I then have a limit. So I'm then not buying it kind of 10%, 15%, however many percent above. Okay, I know exactly where I'm going to get filled. I then know where my stop loss is because I'm attaching my stop loss to the order. This is much more kind of um, how Darvish trade. Obviously, he was gallivanting around, around the world in terms of the orders he'd use. If you've read Stan Weinstein's book, he was a fan of using buy stop limit orders. I do, I do as well, especially if you can't be staring at the screens all day or and or and or you just you you just, you just don't want to stare at the screens all day. I think a buy stop limit order is a prudent way, but obviously make that make that decision yourself. You are all big boys and girls. So this is how I'm then planning the trade out, and let's maybe put in an exact level for the uh, for the stop loss as well. Let's just say it's somewhere in here like this. Okay, so this is how I'm thinking about the trade. The blue line is where I'm looking to get in. The green line is then where I'm looking to sell one third of the position at two times where in this instance, my initial stop loss is going to be. So let's play it forward. So first bar here. Now we're going to go back onto auto. First bar here, we get entered and I also free roll the trade in the first day. Really, really nice. And then the subtlety there, you also have a 52 high, 52 week high coming through. So I have my entry in here. Plus I've sold one third and I'm just gonna put FR to free roll. So after the first day, the stock can now do no damage to my account equity line. Now, how I like to manage my trades may be different to how you like to manage your trades, how Minovini manages his trades, how Livermore manages his trades, Darvis manages his trades. I'm just gonna tell you what I do and how I trade. If you find it useful, great. If you don't find it useful, I don't really care. This is how I trade. So what I am looking to do after I have free rolled the trade and my objective is to free roll into the first pop. So this here, imagine we've got this kind of VCP, three contractions, right? We've got one contraction, two contraction, three contraction, breakout, the vast, vast majority. I don't want to put a specific percentage on it, okay? Because I don't know the specific percentage, but the vast majority are going to have a testing action after the breakout. So in here, this is where I'm looking to buy, okay? Through here, this VCP. I'm then looking to free roll into the first pot. So I'm trying to free roll my position into here, usually by selling one third at two times when my stop loss is and or if I'm pushing my stop loss. So in this instance here, if there's a logical place, which I wasn't kind of on this trade because, because of how it was setting up, but let's say I went in with an initial risk of 5% and the stock starts going out and then I could go, well, hang on a minute, I have a, I have an 8-ish percent gain on the trade and I could move my stop loss from 5% to 4%. I'm up I'm up 8%. I could now sell one third, which is two times where my new stop loss is. I free rolled the trade. That is my objective early on. Free roll the trade, take all of the risk out of the trade. Of course, you can then have a lot of slippage. You can have got gap down. So theoretically, you can still lose money on the trade, but this is how I'm looking to do it, subject to kind of a black swan-ish event with a large gap down. Whatever. I think you're understanding the point. So what I'm trying to do here is enter free roll and then I'm trying to sit through this first testing action which again is going to happen in the vast majority of the cases now most people cannot sit they are terrible at sitting especially if they've had a pop-up here and maybe the stock's up eight percent twelve percent sixteen percent they can't sit as Livermore said it is very very uncommon to buy right and sit tight the big money I think is in sitting tight which you're then going to see with the sell rules as well which we're going to go on to when we then go into the optimizing profits phase as I told you this video is going to be very much in the weeds very very deep okay trading is not easy it is not simple you're not going to learn it in the space of a week or so okay it's going to take time repetition practicing the stuff that i'm trying to teach you here in a very deliberate manner so i'm then trying to sit through the testing action now when the testing action reverses okay what i am then doing is moving my stop loss from where it was potentially and let's just say i haven't then moved it up in terms of the active risk mitigation part on the reversal that is then when i'm pushing my stop loss up to around about break even maybe a little bit higher up depends how it kind of plays out but that is then my intention so i'm trying to free roll into this first pop sit through the test then on the reversal that's then when i'm looking to move my stop loss up to break even or above then try and ride the intermediate term trend but we're going to talk about potentially choking things off when it starts getting extended in price so let's go back into it so we have this VCP here, we have it breaking out. So what I am now trying to do is sit, okay? Sit through the first testing action. And sometimes, and this is why I've chosen a deliberately tricky stock, sometimes you do not have the first testing action. What do you do? Interesting. It becomes more difficult, doesn't it? And it's 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 fairly fun actually. The trade management side of things, when you're in a in a market environment where it's where it's fun, things are working, things are trending. Yeah, okay, it's fun in terms of the trade management. It's a constant challenge. That's why most people are uh, most people are drawn to it. So we gap up here. So if I told you on your entry you were going to be up around about around about 30 around about 37% in the space of 5 days you would have probably said wow it's a really really good trade do you have any reason to be selling it 
the market is proving you're right. Now, I still think Melly was trading before this, but let's just imagine this was the initial IPO. So you potentially have an initial IPO coming off kind of the first buyable base. It was a little bit tricky to kind of buy this unless you're buying the gap up. I don't I don't like buying gap ups. But in here, see how it starts tightening up. So you are potentially, and I think Melly is kind of the, the Amazon of South America or something, something like that as well. So you're potentially positioned in the stock coming out of its real first buyable base. It's getting out great, 52 week high, so it's a leader versus a market. What do you do? Can you sit tight or not? Do you, do, you, do, you just take, do you just take your profits and run here? So for me, I like to try and sit right, ride that intermediate term trend to the best of my ability. So I am using a combination of the 10 EMA and the 21 EMA because I have two thirds of my position left. So I've sold one third in here to free roll early on. Stock can now do no damage to my account, my account equity line. Now I'm trying to ride the 10 EMA and 21 EMA selling a third and a third on closed belows. But if I start thinking the stock gets extended, I may be looking to choke it off. Now this is where it gets very, very subjective, very discretionary in, in nature. So what I am going to do here is push my stop loss up to break even or around about here. It would be silly to have a 37% gain come all the way back down and stop and, and stop me out down here. But now you're probably going here, oh, it's a scam that I need to exit, need to exit. Well, do you? Actually, I would apply a Bayesian way of thinking go, the stock is acting great. It deserves one more day. So let's play it forward one more day. This is when also you need to have that Livermore quote in your head. Most people are fearful when they when they should be hopeful and most people are hopeful when they when they should be fearful. So when they have a loss, they're actually hopeful that their loss is going to turn back in back into a gain instead of be fearful that their loss becomes a very large loss. When people have a profit, generally the thing that I've noticed is when they have a profit, they become very fearful that their profit is going to go away. But that there is when you want to be very hopeful. So we have the next day here. Now you may say, well, this looks like a really bearish candlestick. It's red, it's big, the volume is up. Well, is it? This is then a Wyckoff concept as well. I would highly recommend you study everything you possibly can and read everything you can that, that Richard Wyckoff wrote. The man was an absolute genius. He was around about 100 years ago, real, real genius. He had three laws, which is the law of supply and demand, laws of core and effect, and the law of effort versus result. So here, effort being the volume. Effort is around about four times, three times our 30-day average. What is the result of this bar? Does price even try and undercut the prior day's left? Does it close below the prior day? Like, nope, gaps up, sells off, little demand tail. Okay, interesting. The stock deserves another day. Next day, what do we see? Shake out demand tail, volume is lessening. This indicates shaking out of weak hands, absorption of supply. Okay, interesting. Potentially a testing action going on that's a little bit higher. Now prices start starting to tighten up and it's pulling into the 10 EMA. Nice. Okay, still tight. Multiple tight range candlesticks as we saw here. Volume declining equals absorption of supply, lessening of supply. Nice. Continue to tighten up. This here, another trigger bar. See this? This is how you then get another trigger bar. Now this would be a very, very, very aggressive ad that you could potentially add through here because you're also getting VCP action. So in terms of VCP, volatility contraction, it is a basing, a kind of basing chart pattern that you'll see in and of its own right. So these higher low contractions building in here. But VCP is also something that is going on in terms of supply and demand. Volatility is contracting. Supply is lessening when you see these multiple tight range candlesticks and declining volume like this. So could so so could you add through here? Absolutely. Logical place for the stop loss probably underneath the last three days. Now I'm not going to do that to avoid to avoid too much too much confusion um, in in this in this video but these are things here where it's kind of setting up you could be looking to add back add back the third add back the third you potentially took off and, and a tight stop loss so what I am then going to do is probably now just move my stop loss up because it's looking fairly contract fairly constructive so something like this okay start breaking out there and you see the VCP nature of it okay these are the things you want to train your eyes for and do you see how that final bar in there that there is what I call a trigger bar do you see how the volume has just been stair stepping down tight range bar you actually then get a mini Darvis box form in here okay if you went down to a lower time frame you'd see something looking really nice probably with a bit of VCP action because you're subtly building high lows in there but this is the type of behavior that you are looking for so the entry point here if we were looking at this as kind of a, a VCP I know it's not a VCP and that's probably confused people VCP is a characteristic you see it in other chart patterns but the entry point is through these recent highs it's not up here you're trying to identify where is supply stop coming to market where can you create a very asymmetric risk versus reward trade where are you expecting price to move very quickly through so you can take very low risk you can then look to mitigate the risk and then move into the optimizing profits phase of the trade now clearly you're not always going to get into the risk mitigation phase you could get stopped out very quickly you're not always going to get into the optimize optimizing profits phase you can mitigate the risk perfectly the stock goes up around about around about 10 percent 12 percent whatever and then pulls back down and you'll stop that break even on the position better to be stopped out break even than have a three five seven percent stop stop loss on the uh, on the trade being triggered so 
Let's now play this forward. So to me, this is testing action reversal. Now I'm pushing my stop loss up. Now let me really confuse some people here. I'm now gonna stagger my stop losses. So ready, I'm gonna stagger my stop losses. So I have two thirds of my position left. We saw one third down here to free roll. I'm now gonna push one stop loss here for one third. And remember, my guidelines here are the black line and the blue line, 10 EMA, 21 EMA. And I'm gonna keep this one a little bit lower. I am an intermediate term trend follower. I'm not a day trader, I'm not a short term trader. I'm an intermediate term trend follower. I'm trying to ride this intermediate term trend to the best of my ability. Let's play it forward. Okay, next bar here. Now this is where it's potentially starting to look a little bit interesting. Why? Because we have high volume coming through, but we start to have a supply shoot. So okay, price is now up around about 70%, which you could say is extended. We have the high volume coming through and now we have, it's a Wyckoff concept, diminishing upwards result. So here is where you can go and get all fancy on it. Now, I don't like to just randomly sell. I much prefer, and I think it is a much more effective way, and this is from my own experience of trading and studying thousands, tens and tens and tens and tens of thousands of these is it's better to go lower the day, lower the day, lower the day if you want to choke it off. So when you start seeing that climactic behavior potentially getting extended high volume diminishing upwards result, lower the day, lower the day, lower the day is an effective way. That is what I like doing. If you like doing it, doing it elsewhere, doing it differently, absolutely fine. I do not care. This is how I trade. So what I'm going to do here is just go lower the day and I'm going to push this one up a little bit, something like that. Okay. Lower the day. Okay, starting to get pretty extended here from the 10 EMA, right? So what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna go lower the day like that. Stopped out there, one third. Now, you can't be upset when you get stopped out like that. Remember, there is gonna come a point in time where you are gonna get stopped out of a position. You're gonna be exiting part, part of your position and the entirety of your position. So you have to have a plan around that, okay? You can't be kind of willy-nilly on this and go, oh, maybe I'll sell that, maybe I'll sell that. No, have a plan and then trade your plan. Know the exact setup that you are looking for. Know the exact criteria that you are looking for with your setup. Know exactly how you are initially controlling the risk. Have a plan in terms of how you are thinking about mitigating the risk. Okay, where am I looking to potentially sell one third, half the position? Am I gonna have to push my stop loss up a little bit? Can I mitigate it with the initial stop loss? What are the percentage gains for that? How is the trade then playing out? Am I able to sit through the testing action? What are the characteristics that I uh, that I am seeing? How I, how am I then thinking about optimizing the profits, both in terms of monetary gain, clearly, but also about the efficiency of the trade? And I think the most efficient way is trying to capture that intermediate term trend. So in here, this is where I'm selling one third of the position. Now for this video, I've deliberately deliberately picked a difficult, difficult stock, difficult stock to uh, manage because trading is not trading is not is not is not textbook. Okay, you're not going to have every single time. Actually, in the majority of cases, you're not going to have a perfect VCP or cup and handle that just perfectly rides to 10 and 20 EMA and goes up hundreds of percent, and then you perfectly sell that. It doesn't happen like that. So that's why I think doing these videos like this and encouraging you to practice in a deliberate manner, I'd highly recommend you read Peak by Anders Eric which is all about deliberate practice and how you can actually deliberately get better better at training but you have to have areas of development in terms of identifying in terms of controlling in terms of mitigating in terms of optimizing so this here is where i'm selling one third there because i went low of the day low of the day stopped out there is really effective now the question is can i try and sit for a larger move so i'm now using the blue line which is going to be the 21 ema so let's see what happens now this here and again this is a subtlety that you'll start to pick up on this is not good Okay, now again, I said I did, was gonna deliberately pick a stock that is not textbook because I wanna try and convey some points here. Do you see how the stock is acting on this pullback subject to this pullback here? Do you see the difference here? So something that you guys are gonna find and that I found in my own trading is when you see a bearish candlestick, okay, in the context of a basing action, but also, also in the context of a trend. So you've entered the stock, it's now trending up. What you are preferably gonna find is when you see a bearish candlestick, overall, this is a bearish candlestick. Effort versus result, there wasn't well, there wasn't that much result, but it gaps up, opens on the higher the day, starts selling off, increased volume. You want to pay very close attention to the following candlestick, why? Because think of this as supply coming to the market. And if we use kind of a dramatic example, okay, think of this as the bleeding of supply, okay? If you've watched war films or anything like that, you'll know if someone if someone has a, uh, has a severe wound and they're bleeding, what is the first thing they always say stop the bleeding okay pressure pressure on the wound so think of that when you see these bearish candlesticks coming through and they're red and it's visual think of that as blood that is bleeding of supply you want to see the bleeding of supply stopped immediately so what do we want to look for in terms of the following candlesticks we want to see either a bullish absorption candlestick this is a bullish absorption candlestick see how the real body is pretty thin there's a demand tail this is a bullish absorption 
Christian candle. So, so is this, so is this, so is this. This would be in terms of, see this bar here, or this bar here, or this bar here, or this bar here. This would be a bullet, these would be bullish reversal bars. So after that bearish bar where supply, the bleeding of supply is coming to market, you want to see that bleeding stopped with either a bullish reversal bar or a bullish absorption candlestick. Now clearly a bullish reversal candlestick is a better indication that demand has regained control of supply. So do you see how after we had this this bearish bar coming through, immediately the bleeding of supply is stopping with this bullish absorption bar. Then we're tight, 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 building the pivot point, volume is stair stepping down. Do you see how the stock is now acting very different over here? Now, this is another Wyckoff concept. This is called a change of character. Do you see how there is a changing of character here? The bleeding of supply is continuing. You have day after day after day, you have five red days in a row here. Now, it's not necessarily just because the candlestick is red, it's bearish. You can see there are red bars here, but they're actually constructive in terms of what is going on from supply and demand. This is not constructive price action. The real bodies are wide, preferably invariably prices, not preferably invariably here, prices opening near the high of the day, closing near the low. High of the day, lower the day. High of the day, lower the day. Gap down, high of the day, lower the day. That is not good price action to see. So let's then play it forward. In here, close below the 21 EMA. That there is the exit. Okay, I was hoping that it was going to be it was going to be better. I was going to have a very big profit. I didn't. It sold off. Now again, you may start thinking, "Oh, that's really silly because you should have sold your whole position up there." Well, when you're up here, you had no idea. You had no idea. This is again a Bayesian way, Bayesian way of thinking that you constantly update your decision making process as new information becomes available. The best traders that I know, I'm friends with, I have studied, they are just able to change their mind like that. They do not, they do not care. As soon as new information becomes available, they are changing their mind. They're changing how they're potentially managing a position. They are always flexible as new information becomes available. They are not rigid in their opinion. They're not thinking, this thing here, this is going to go to the moon. It's going to be up a thousand percent in a couple of weeks. It may do, it may not do. But if it is going to do that, then you'd expect it to ride these intermediate these intermediate term trends along these moving averages. But what it what if it doesn't? What if it doesn't go up a thousand percent in a couple of weeks? What if what if this is a top hit? Well, we're going to start to see supply coming to the market, and we're going to be stopped out. So we have to be ready for that. We have to be prepared for that. So there, we're stopped out. Okay, fine, great. We tried to capture the intermediate term trend. Would it have been great if we sold everything right here? Of course, it would have been great. But that is not the intention of my sell rules. You're not going to do that. Completely unrealistic expectation. You need to get that expectation out of your mind if you have that expectation you're going to be able to say the sell the absolute high you're not okay if you do that is more luck than judgment try and do it 10 times in a row you're never going to be able to do it so then you can start to see here price then just sells off chain clear change of character coming through so you want to be very very aware of that and then here starts just selling off selling off selling off so i'm trying to capture that to my best of my ability. Now, I don't know whether that's gonna be, the intermediate term trend is gonna be 5%, 50%, hundreds of percent, or if it's gonna go up 5% and stop me out, or if it's gonna go up 2% and then turn around and stop me out. I have no idea. I am there to try and capture the intermediate term trend to the best of my ability. So I'll wrap it up there, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you learned a lot. You may need to watch it a couple of times there. What I would really encourage you to do is practice deliberately in the four areas of trading, which I think are key to master. Trade identification, initial controlling risk, mitigation of risk, and then optimizing profits. If you work on improving those four areas, I think your trading will dramatically improve. So thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.